村の誰が命令を出してるそいつらがケイちゃんを狙ってることは分かってるんだそれでリカはどこですのまだ生きてますの答える気がないんだったら Kasai, my love, I didn't expect you to be here, but here you are, and I adore every second you're on screen. All like six of them. Welcome to the series where I give my thoughts nobody cares about for the most recent episode or so of Higurashi Sotsu. Today we're covering episodes 5 and 6, or Watakashi, parts 1 and 2, respectively. If I had to sum up these episodes and the arc in general, it would be that it's Good on a scene by scene basis, but once again disappointing in terms of the story's haul. The direction for these scenes is absolutely top notch in terms of horror and emotions, but it falls flat in giving us answers as everything is the most indirect, simple answer. More on that later. Why, Passione, did we need to see Rika dancing again? We know you're very proud of that animation, but come on. I was at least expecting to see the mistake she made that led her to finding out Keiichi went to the ritual storehouse, but nope, we don't even get that. They really did s h i o n dirty here, huh? I was really expecting to see bits of her backstory, especially the sibling switch, as that would also be relevant to Mion's actions. I wasn't even shown in the original Dean anime, so it could have made for a nice reveal, even for anime onlys. For those who don't know, Mion was born Shion and vice versa, and at some point in their childhood they were switching places and Shion was branded with a tattoo of the successor, permanently making her Mion the one who holds the demon. I still suspect that we will be getting some of Shion's backstory later on, the one who was born as Mion, as she is shown next to Saint Lucia in the opening and will most likely end up being a key character in the climax of the story as Sadako's Nene. L5 Mion really is something. She frequently has moments of clarity where she realizes what she has done and grieves for those she's murdered. In particular, the scene where she strangles Dika was the most interesting to me, as she talks about knowing Dika is carrying out the murders due to a duty to her family. Projection much? We don't actually see Mion's Kimiyoshi torture session, but I think it's safe to say that she continued to interrogate him coldly, eventually falling into a procedural trance. She has been able to put on the role of the successor to carry out punishment duties, so where L5 state only makes that more effective and scarier. Unfortunately for her, Kimiyoshi actually didn't have any worthwhile information. There are some neat parallels going on here. If you're a newcomer to Higurashi watching Sotsu, please skip to this part of the video to avoid OG spoilers. Okay, so both Mion and Shion's first kill is accidental. Mion didn't mean to kill Shion, as evidenced by her reaction afterward. Gotta congratulate the VA, by the way, this scene was made by her. And Shion didn't intend to kill Oryo. Neither had initially intended to go on a killing spree, but were roped into it by the first sin. It might seem lazy or out of character for her to repeat many of the actions Shion took, but it was actually stated several times in the visual novels that whatever Shion had in her, Mion had as well. In contrast to Shion, Mion was prepared to die after her job was complete. Her motivation, too, was not revenge, but to protect her friend. Some people are complaining about Mion's characterization, going as far as to call it character assassination, and same with Satoko. To these people, I have to say, you've simply misunderstood their characters. Just because we're getting a new side of them doesn't make it out of character, and in fact, I think it has been executed quite well. Mion has not been reduced to a yandere. Contrary to what some will say. While jealousy might have played a role in exacerbating her L5 symptoms, it wasn't her core motivation. Her going this far for any friend, honestly, is exactly what one would expect of L5 Mion. I'm not the first one to make this claim, but Sotsu has consistently been disappointing in terms of answers. Everything is literally just the most obvious answer you could come up with. Well, to Akashi, was a step up because we actually see a new side of a character we knew, but Oni Akashi was just stuff we knew from Sumiho Toboshi. Interestingly, it seems newcomers are having more fun with this aspect than old timers. I'd be interested to hear your perspectives on this. Um, where did Mion get the thing about Rika talking to men in construction uniforms? Did I miss something? Because, like, later on we see people, undercover policemen, who look like that, but 
How would she know about them beforehand? There was no time to see someone as she immediately strangled her after she met with Keiji. I might just be too hopeful, but I have more faith in Ryu Kishi than to produce answer arcs like these completely genuinely. I'm expecting there to be some kind of twist that reframes the way we have viewed the Akashi arcs. There are certain implications if you apply Umineko logic, which isn't out of the question, but I won't go any further into that now. I also don't believe Sotsu will only be 15 episodes. Keiji's voice actor has said that his role in Sotsu is quote unquote complicated, and we have yet to see that and probably won't in the allotted time. We'll end this on predictions for Tatari Akashi. Hopefully I'll hit the mark a little closer this time. I don't think Satoko actually did much this time, just enough to recreate Minagoro Shihen from the original story. She got Tepe to move to Hinamizawa, and caused some havoc to spread the rumor about him being this disrespectful and angry man, when in actuality he no longer fits that archetype. The point of this was to create the perfect world she desired, as she saw Minagoroshi which went off without a hitch, except for Takno coming in at the end, but obviously that isn't a concern anymore. The problem is, Tepe being innocent this time had unintended consequences. That is, Oishi going L5 due to observing an innocent man being ganged up by the entire village. I believe that the Tepe we saw at the end of Tatari Akashi was actually Oishi, and Sasuko hallucinated him as being Tepe due to the fact that she did not take her medicine for Hinamizawa syndrome that day, the medicine she got at the clinic in between examinations from Takano. She obviously still has trauma regarding him as was shown when he first showed up to apologize in Sasuko Ashihen. That would explain how Oishi has the bat when he appears at the festival. The one thing that makes me unsure of this is that the outcome of the fight doesn't seem to support this as Keiji seems to win that fight before going unconscious himself. The only explanation I can think of without introducing new logic <coughs> <Umineko. coughs> is that Satoko's PTSD and Hinamizawa syndrome is triggered in the form of Keiji killing Tepe in the way she observed from the original loops. That's all I have for this one, let me know your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree, and remember to like this video and subscribe if you want more content like this, as well as read throughs of the When They Cry VNs with my newcomer friend. Any sort of engagement helps a growing channel like mine. Thanks, and like always, I go by Tasty Nachos, and you go by.